Well, hello. I'm so glad to see you all. I've really missed you, and I hope you're doing well. We're about to study the most famous story of Daniel, Daniel and the Den of Lions. It's one of the best ones. Our uh, Bible verse that we have is in Psalm 55, verse 17, and it says, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice evening and morning and at noon you know that was the power to daniel's life he prayed he had specific times of prayer and he cried out to god and god heard him and i hope early in life you develop the habit of crying out to god and letting god hear your voice do you know he wants to hear from you he loves you so very, very much, and he wants to, he wants to hear your voice, and, um, and he wants to answer your prayers. So let's pray before we start our, our story today. Dear Father, thank you so much for the boys and girls listening to my voice. I pray that you would use their lives in a great way. We've looked at Daniel. And we've saw, seen how you've used him in a mighty way. And I want to pray for each of these boys and girls that their lives might count for the kingdom of God. And before, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are, pray, are closed, would you please just pray right in your, there in your heart? And would you say, dear God, please speak to me. Help me to listen. And help me to obey. And dear God, every single time we come to your word, that's our prayer, that you would speak to our hearts, that we would listen, and that we would obey, and that you would raise up from the boys and girls that are listening to my voice, some young people who will purpose in their heart to do what's right, that they would do great and mighty thanks for the kingdom of God because they've discovered the secret of praying to you, letting you hear our voice and answer our prayers, asking you to speak to your heart, listening, obeying your voice. Nothing else matters. Use our lives, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're studying about Daniel, and I love this story. I like that early in life, he made a decision to honor the Lord. He decided as a young purpose person that I am going to do what's right. I am not going to follow the crowd. I am going to honor the Lord. And boys and girls, you got to start there. You've got to start where you realize that you're a sinner. You realize that you violated God's kingdom, uh, his commandments. And you've got to turn from your sin and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And then as a believer in Jesus Christ, you say, I'm going to live for him. I don't care what anybody else does. I am going to do what's right. That started him on the course that leads to the story today. You know, when we get to the story today of Daniel in the den of lions, he's not a kid anymore. He's probably about 90 years old. And he stood for God his entire life. I want you, when you get older, to be able to look back over your life and say, I've lived it for God. I've given him my very best. Well, they made that decision early in life. Remember that he was able to interpret a very difficult dream because he walked with God so closely. He knew what God uh, was what wanted for him and was able to communicate that with others. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how when they were told to bow down to the idols, they said, no, we will not bow down to your idols. We will serve the Lord our God. And because they did that, God honored them and delivered them without a hair on their head being singed. What an exciting story. We remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar and how he had the dream of the tree. And because he walked in pride and wouldn't honor the Lord, God allowed his reason to be taken from him. And he didn't get his reason back until he acknowledged that God is in heaven and he rules over the kingdom of men. I want to encourage you, don't walk in pride. 
Don't act like you don't need the Lord. You do. Everyone needs the Lord. Well, um, we remember how um, Nebuchadnezzar after this was changed. And he became a believer in, in, in God. And then he had his son, um, Belshazzar. And we talked last time about how the handwriting was on the wall. And, and, and God said to Belshazzar, you've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get your heart right with God and you would not listen. You're, de you're done. You're done. No more chances. And the kingdom was taken from him, and it was given to a man named Darius. Now, Darius was of the Medes and the Persians. He was, um, he was the king now. He's about probably at least the third one under Daniel's reign. And he looked out among himself, and he chose 120 princesses, the strongest, the biggest, the smartest, the best. And he put them in charge of his kingdom because he couldn't do everything. And he, so he divvied it up amongst those people. And then he took three of the men and made them um, in charge of all the rest of them. And one of those three was Daniel. Daniel was the ruler, and in fact, of the three, Darius liked him the best, and so he made him the most important. So Daniel now, because the king saw what the Bible says is an excellent spirit in him, he raised Daniel up to be in charge of all of these other uh, princesses, and Daniel was um, the leader of them. Well, the princesses were jealous of Daniel. They didn't like it that the king liked him more than the other people. So they said to himself, let tell you what let's do. Let's find an area of weakness in Daniel. Let's find an area where we can find fault with him, where we can take him to the king and we can get rid of him. So they started checking Daniel out. They probably looked at him and said, let's see if there's any place he's lied. Well, they couldn't find a place where he had been dishonest because Daniel had decided he was not going to be a liar. He had decided he was going to tell the truth. They probably looked at him and said, has he ever stolen anything? Has he ever used the king's money uh, incorrectly? And they looked for everything they could to find something wrong with him, but they couldn't find anything. Maybe they looked to see if there was people that maybe that he did something that was inappropriate and so they searched through Daniel's life to find out if there's anything inappropriate that he'd done. And they couldn't find anything. Maybe they tried to find where he'd been unkind or mean or unjust to someone else, and they couldn't find anything else. They went through his whole life trying to find something that was wrong that they could get rid of him with. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not so sure I'd want somebody looking through every single area of my life to find something wrong with it. They might find something. Maybe they found a place where I've lost my temper. Maybe they found a place where I didn't do something I should have done. They uh, even looked to see if Daniel had been careless and forgotten something, but he was such a hard worker, and they could not find any area in his life that they could uh, use against him. And so the men came back together, and they said, you know, if we're going to get rid of Daniel, the only thing we can find out that we can do is in his, his love for the Lord. We're going to have to find a way to catch him in his love for God that would um, get the king mad. So they came up with this terrible plan. They came to the king and they said, Oh, king, live forever. All of the presidents, all of the princes have gotten together. Now, this was not true because they hadn't gotten with Daniel. Everybody hadn't gotten together. And we have decided, O oh, King Darius, that we want to honor you. We want to show great respect and adoration for you. And so we want to make a law of the Medes and the Persians that can never be changed. And we want to make that law that if anyone prays to any other God but you, O king, they'll be thrown into a den of lions. See, these men knew 
that Daniel was only going to pray to the one true God. They knew they could catch him there. They knew he wouldn't pray to Darius. He would think that was absolutely ridiculous. Darius is just a man. They're not, he's not going to do that. And they couldn't find anything he was doing wrong, so they decided to find what he was doing right and twist it and turn it so that they could get the king to um, get rid of him. So Darius was flattered. He thought, well, my, 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 all these people must really love me. They must think that I'm just so great that they all want to worship and pray to me for a whole month. How can I stop them? And so he says, listen, are you sure everybody's in on this? And they said, oh, king, live forever. Yes, everybody's in on this. Everybody was not in on it. But they, um, he told them that um, let's sign this law. And so the king was flattered, and the king signed the law that could not be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persian, that anyone who prayed to any other god except for him for the next 30 days would be thrown into the den of lions. Well, those three scoundrels went out of there and they said, all right, we've got him now. And they went to Daniel's house. See, they had watched Daniel closely and they knew Daniel three times a day, evening and morning and at noon. He would go to his window and he'd open up the window and it would face toward Jerusalem. Now remember that Jerusalem is the place where he came from, where he'd been kidnapped out of years ago. It was a place where they worshiped God. And because the people in Jerusalem and in Israel had, had uh, forsaken God and had not followed him, God had allowed them to uh, be destroyed and allowed them to go into the hands of the enemy. And it had been prophesied that they would be in the hands of the enemy for 70 years. And Daniel knew that time was just about up. So he was praying for his country. He was praying to God. And three times a day, now he may have prayed more times than that, but we know that specifically he took time to set aside for prayer. And he would open up the window and he'd pray and he'd worship God and he'd give thanks to God and he would pray for his country and pray for his people. Well, those men hid out in the bushes and were watching him and as soon as um, the Bible says, as soon as Daniel knew the decree had been made, he knew what, that he, anyone who prayed to any other god but Darius for 30 days would be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel got down on his knees by his window and prayed to God. See, boys and girls, he didn't let anyone stop him, anyone tear him away from God. He tried to obey God. Uh, the, man's laws when he could, but when they told him to do something that was not right, he would not listen. So he prayed to God. Well, the men went running back to the king, and they said, oh, king, live forever. Did you not um, give a decree that no one was supposed to pray to any other god but you for 30 days, O king? And did not you sign it according to the laws of the Medes and the Persian? He says, yes, you all know that, that I did that. Why are you asking? And they said, someone has broken the law. Someone has violated your, your command. And maybe the king said, well, maybe they didn't know that he, uh, I had signed the law. And they said, oh, yes, king, we made sure this person knows. We made sure he knew all about the law. And he did it anyway. And the king was upset. And he said, you mean he knew that I had signed a law that no one was supposed to pray to any other god but me for 30 days and he prayed to someone besides me and they said yes and, and, they, and the king may have said well who did he pray to and they said well he prayed to the true and the living God and about this time the king's heart sunk and maybe he said please tell me it wasn't Daniel and they said oh yes it was Daniel see Dan uh, the king knew that Daniel was going to pray to the, um, to the true and the living God so they brought Daniel before the king and Daniel came before the king and he said to him, Oh, Daniel, 
Daniel, I didn't realize this. I wasn't thinking clearly. And he said, he, the Bible says that the king tried all day long and into the evening to find a way to get out of this. But remember, he had signed the law according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians, and it could not be changed. You see, these people were very superstitious, and they believed if you changed the law, then all that evil would come on you. So he couldn't in his own mind change the law and so he tried to find a loophole or a way to get out of it but these men wouldn't let him get out of it and so finally he brought Daniel and he brought him to the lion's den to lower him into the lion's den now you know those men made sure the lions hadn't been fed for a long time and he the king came to Daniel and he said to him Daniel your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver thee from the lion's den. And think how the king said it. Daniel, your God, that you serve continually, he'll deliver you from the lion's den. I don't think the king thought he was going to deliver him. I thought he hoped he would. But I think the king thought nobody is going to be able to deliver him from the hungry lions. And so with a aching heart, the king allowed Daniel to be taken and lowered into the den of lions. Now, I don't know about you, but of all the ways to go, I don't think being eaten alive would be a very popular way to go. And so Daniel's going down there and, and, and instead of these vicious, hungry lions ripping him to shreds, they were like kitty cats. I don't know if they came up, nudged against him, and rubbed against him. I don't know if he patted him. I don't know. I think it would have been very interesting to what happened down there. But Daniel went down into the lion's den, and I have a feeling that Daniel laid down beside the lions, and I have a feeling he probably went to sleep. I think that he was uh, amazed because God sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions. Do you know, when you're doing what God wants you to do, God can protect you in ways that other people don't understand? The king had said, Thy God, whom you serve continually, he's able to deliver thee. But Daniel wouldn't have said it like that. Daniel would have said, My God, who I am serve continually, is able to deliver me. Daniel knew that God was able, and Daniel was going to do what's right, whether God chose to deliver him or not. Well, Daniel probably got a great night's sleep. Maybe he used one of the lions for a pillow. I certainly would, huh? Um, but the king, he couldn't sleep at all. He was so upset. All night long, he thought of Daniel. Daniel that loved the Lord. Daniel being torn to bits by the lion. Daniel, who didn't deserve this. And I bet he thought about those rascals that tried to um, take Daniel and destroy him. Boy, I bet he had a lot of thinking about them. I bet he thought, okay, I'm going to take care of them when this is all over. But his heart was so broken because he loved Daniel. He knew Daniel served the true and the living God. And he had just thrown this wonderful servant of the Lord into a um, a den with fierce, hungry lions, and all night long he couldn't sleep. And the Bible says that early in the morning the king called the guards and they brought him to the mouth of the lion den. See, they had put a, uh, a rock over it and they had put uh, a seal on it and they stamped it with the king's seal. Those uh, bad guys made sure that uh, Daniel wasn't going to be able to get out of that. And so d they came um, in the morning, and the Bible says that he came with haste. In other words, he hurried, and he cried with a lamentable voice. That means he was so upset. Daniel, Daniel, he cried out. His voice was just all upset. And he said to him, Daniel, Daniel, you servant of the living God. Is your God, whom you serve continually, was he able to deliver thee out of the lion's den? And I kind of think he might have woke Daniel up. 
And Daniel said, oh, hey, king, how you doing? He said, king, my God, who I can serve continually, he is able. He's able to deliver me from the lion's den. And he sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions because I have done nothing wrong and I've done nothing against you, O king. And Daniel cried and said, pull him. Uh, the king cried and he said, pull him out of there. And they pulled Daniel up out of the lion's den. And he says to him, Daniel, come forth. And they pulled him out of the lion's den and they brought him up and he didn't have a scratch on him. And the king was so happy. And the um, Bible says here, let me read it to this to you. It says, so Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. You know why Daniel was able to make it when no one else could have? Because he trusted God. He believed in his God and he served him continually he didn't serve him a little while and then stop and do what he wanted to do and then mess up a while he served the Lord so faithfully and so God delivered him and then the king commanded to bring those other three men and they were lowered down into the lion's den and this is a little bit rough but let me read you what it says about them and it says here that they cast them into the lion's den and the lions had mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces ever they came to the bottom of the den. So that means before they even touched the floor, they were history. They were gone. See, they didn't have what Daniel had. They didn't believe in the Lord God. And God didn't send his angel to shut the mouth of the lions. And then the Bible says that King Darius uh, called all the people together. And he said, I want to call all nations and all people together. And I want to declare. Hang on a minute. Let me get you the picture. He says, I want to make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men fear and tremble before the God of Daniel. So no longer is he wanting everybody to worship and serve him and pray to him. He says, look, I want you to fear and tremble for the God of Daniel, for he uh, is the living God, steadfast forever, and his kingdom will have no end. So this man, too, think of the impact that Daniel had on his life. Daniel, because this, he believed in the Lord, and God protected him in amazing ways. Well, I look at Daniel, and he has so many wonderful stories about how God delivered him and protect him, protected him. And what I want for your life is for you to look back and you to see all the wonderful ways that God has delivered and protected you because you believe in your God, because you serve him continually, because you make decisions that you purpose in your heart. I'm going to do what's right, no matter what anyone else does. That's the secret, boys and girls, to a godly life, to a life that pleases and honors our Lord. Let's pray together. Dear Father, thank you for these boys and girls that are listening to my voice. I pray that they, like Daniel, might early in life purpose in their heart to honor you. And that throughout their entire life, instead of looking to people, may they serve you continually. And may they see great and mighty things in their life because they believe in the Lord God. Thank you so much for them. May your hand of blessing rest upon their lives. In Jesus' name we pray.